Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bharat Nagpal and this is the Lawaness from La TV. Now this product is exceptionally exciting uh, from the company which changed its name to La Echo from La TV. Uh, the device is La One S. Uh, strange uh, name nomenclature but the build quality is an all metal design which looks really fantastic. It runs on their own proprietary OS called EY which is built atop of Android Lollipop. Over the front you have a 5 megapixel camera and a bunch of sensors in the earpiece. Below that you'll see a 5.5 inch Full HD 1920 by 1080p display which has exceptional colors great deep blacks and a wonderful outdoor visibility uh, one of the good displays in this price bracket on the bottom you have three touch capacitive buttons which remain hidden otherwise until you tap on that area and uh, they get backlit uh, it's a really unique way to present these buttons and they look exceptionally nice and the overall look and feel of the device is very premium uh, it looks great it feels good in the hand it's slightly heavy at 170 grams but we are not complaining with the kind of build quality it has. On the bottom you have a USB Type-C port flanked on either side with a grill which houses the speaker and the microphone. The device has dual SIM card capabilities. On the right you have the power button and the main volume rocker uh, for controlling your audio levels on the device. And over at the back you have a 13 megapixel ISO cell camera with a f2 aperture, great low light visibility, dual tone flash, a secondary noise cancellation microphone and a mirror finish fingerprint scanner. You should get really excited at the fact that the device feels a lot better than what it's priced at. It feels exceptionally good in the hand, uh, seems really fast and responsive at the first go, and the overall look and finish of the device is a lot more premium than the price value suggests. Uh, which means that right now, as far as the first impressions are concerned, Le Echo has managed to make quite an impression. Now the UI is quite fast and responsive. Uh, you have a very iOS-like or a Xiaomi uh, MIUI-like but more iOS-like uh, user interface. You can see a lot of transparency in the overall look and feel of the OS. You also have icons in the settings panel that mimic a lot of the icons uh, that you see on an iOS device. So much so that they also have something called the control center which allows you to change the brightness levels, uh, jump quickly into the calculator or power of the camera. You can also turn on the flashlight from uh, this uh, sort of control center. Uh, the overall look and feel of the user interface is great and also the fact that the user interface is quite snappy uh, makes the overall feel of the device uh, quite good. Now apart from the usual shortcuts you also have a barcode or a QR code scanner uh, which again will pop open the browser to take you to the destination of that barcode or search for best prices if you're scanning a barcode on a product. Another great feature of uh, the operating system is that it can detect where you're holding the phone from. The keyboard or the keypad shifts automatically to that side. So if you hold it with your right hand, the keypad shifts to the right side. If you hold it with your left hand, the keypad shifts to the left side. You can kill applications by swiping up to the left or you can kill all applications and free up some memory from the bottom of the control panel. Now if you jump into about device, you can see that we are on Android 5.0.2 and the device is running a Helio X10 chipset. Now it's a 2.2 gigahertz MediaTek Helio X10 with VRG6200 GPU. You also get 3 gigabyte of RAM and 32 gigabyte of storage and the device runs on a 3000 milliamp hour battery which also supports quick charging. We managed to charge the device fully in roughly an hour's time which is quite impressive. The company also promises about three and a half hours of talk time using just about five minutes on the charger included. Uh, the USB Type-C helps in making the device a quick charge device. Right now you can see that I'm trying to register a new fingerprint. Uh, it's quite quick the process of registering a fingerprint and also once you have registered your fingerprint uh, the device goes from the lock screen uh, to the unlock uh, almost swiftly. Uh, they promise a 93% accuracy as far as an unlock is concerned. So if you place your finger just right it unlocks the device very quickly. Now the camera was quite impressive. We managed to click a bunch of pictures with the camera. The UI of the camera is also very iOS-like. Uh, you can switch into video mode and you can see that you can switch from regular 1080p video to 4K video, uh, which is excellent. In slow motion, you can switch between 2x and 4x. Uh, in photo, you get a bunch of options and scene modes uh, that you can uh, quickly tap into, switch between various scene modes 
you also have HDR and night mode, which is fantastic. Now the camera focuses quickly. You also have uh, a bunch of preloaded filters. Uh, again, very iOS like you have nine filters that will change the color prior to clicking the picture. And uh, then you can frame up your subject and click a picture. In my case, it's going to be Yoda over here. So the picture quality is pretty good. You zoom into your picture, you can see a lot of detail, a lot of sharpness is in this 13 uh, megapixel ISO cell camera. Uh, you get a great outdoor camera, especially in uh, daylight. We captured some images and we got a really, really good result uh, from the camera. Uh, actually better than I expected it to be in our initial impressions. Now we haven't gone through tests uh, like we do with all the other devices. Uh, but as far as first impressions are concerned, the La One S seems to be doing a great job in the camera department as well. So what we have here is from a new company, a device that isn't priced too high, is built exceptionally well with an all metal construction. You have great hardware, a Helio X10 chipset, uh, a fingerprint scanner, USB type C charging, quick charging, a 3000 milliamp hour battery, a full HD display. 4K video recording capabilities, 3 gigabyte of RAM and 32 gigabyte of storage. Overall, a great package for the price bracket and uh, the UI is really fast responsive. Uh, the only downside that I'm looking at over here is that they're still setting up their service centers and they promise to have 555 service centers. So will these service centers be equipped with the spares or replacements and what kind of service will this company offer? Uh, also, the other thing that I'm looking at is uh, what kind of software updates will Le Echo or Le TV offer for the users. So right now we're running Android 5.0.2. Will they update the device to Android 6 soon enough is what will make or break this device in the future. But right now for the price and for the kind of features that it has, it's turning out to be quite an impressive device. Our review should be out before the phone goes on sale so that you can make your decision. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Also, if you haven't already, go check out the trailer for our Let's Game a video, which is going to be out shortly. Now, this one was our biggest production till date, and it's definitely going to be worth your watch uh, later on in the coming weeks. And like always, if you like this video, guys, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, make sure you spread the word, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, uh, and you should have by now, but if you haven't, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to all the updates from iGAN. This has been Bharat Nakwal. I'll see you in the next one. You have a good day ahead.